Welcome back and moving on to our second segment for today and still we are talking about the African, uh, the U.S. African uh, Leaders Summit taking place in Washington D.C. and talking about uh, the cooperation and uh, support uh, between uh, the United States and the African continent. So uh, we have the pleasure to have with us here in the studio. We have Mr. Abdul Ghaffar Ahmed and uh, he is actually uh, Mr. Abdul Ghaffar uh, the Executive Director at African Center for Investment and Trade Exchange. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So first of all, I'd like you to tell me um, how important it is when it comes to the uh, cooperation and support between uh, the United States and the African countries. Okay, uh, good morning and thank you for hosting me. Uh, firstly, um, we're talking about the cooperation between American and African countries. Uh, it's a long time way back there, if you can to go back to the history, there have been a lot of, uh, you know, cooperation and not just cooperation, there have been a lot of intermingling together in terms of many things. Uh, if we talk about uh, in, uh, in America, actually, there's almost like 13% of Africa, uh, of people origin from Africa living there. Uh, and uh, as we can see, even at the reign of Barack Obama, uh, he tried to do the similar uh, summit a uh, couple of years back. And then uh, the president Joe Biden is moving forward, and we've been seeing a lot of cooperation happening, uh, both of the in terms of trade, in terms of uh, you know uh, economical uh, things, and even facing the crisis uh, that the world is facing. But what I'm gonna say is that you know, um, to be more honest, there is still a lot of way to go. Uh, we need real and genuine uh, 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 meetings and discussions in Africa. Uh, we all know that uh, most of the continent in the world have benefited from Africa a lot. So we are thinking of is the time that we Africa benefit as well. You know, because we are talking about, there's a lot of time that because we don't have that knowledge, not, we don't have that exposure, we don't have a lot of things. So we are not aware how we have been, uh, I mean, getting advantage from. So I think it's the time now that we can participate, we can, I mean, uh, share. Uh, so that people would know that Africa is not just Africa 20 years back, 30 years back, 50 years back. There have been a lot of progress. Countries in Africa are developing. They have been named one of the countries, one of the fastest growing countries in the world. Uh, and the economy is rising. Uh, the stability is starting to, to, have, uh, to happen in African countries. Because uh, before, we may say we don't have the, uh, uh, the, the stability of peace. And now I think things are getting more better. Uh, having good uh, governance from the African countries and things are getting more better. So for me, it's like a, it's a very important uh, summit which we can see all the leaders of Africa are available discussing uh, the issue that let's strengthen the African country. Let's see what are they liking to be provided. Uh, it's not just about fund, it's about uh, experience as well. Uh, it's about they call it the know-how and to do the things. I think a uh, uh, sort of summit would bring a lot of uh, achievements and of course we have talked a lot uh, before about um, mm -hmm. that uh, how the african continent is rich with its raw materials the natural resources capital yeah. well uh, actually it is full of treasures and uh, if i'm talking uh, we have uh, u.s vice president Kamala harris announced the launch of many commercial educational and social initiatives to enhance the cooperation between the african continent and the united states including all also uh, the creativity of young, uh, young African leaders. So in this uh, part in particular, if I'm talking about the leaders of the future, the young leaders and their uh, input and their vision to the future, especially uh, that we are talking about uh, the, the aim of our vision. Yeah, as you say, as you mentioned, you know, we know that Africa have a lot of resources. Uh, but what we need now is the know-how, as I mentioned earlier, the experience of doing, making these resources to real resources. And that's what probably we're having. Let's say, I'm, I'm going to give an example. Let's say there's a country. Uh, the country will have a goal, let's say, but you don't know how to make that goal to become money. So that's the problem we're facing. So you have to take out the goal to the place where you can turn it back to money, then bring it back. So if you're talking about the, 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 the initiative, uh, by the VP, I think uh, they should focus on giving training, more training to those young Africa, so that when you have the expertise, you have the knowledge, you can do anything. 
So what we are lacking now is not, we already know that there's money in Africa actually. We know that there are resources in Africa, but the, the expertise, we need the, the experience, the international experience. We need to use technology as a, as a tool. We need a lot of things that within that in training youth, it will bring a lot of things to Africa. I'm going to give an example in India. Days back before, we see how India give training to their uh, uh, citizens, and now most of the biggest tech companies in the world are, Indian, uh, are from India. Why? Because they have the training, they have the education needed. So we're talking about the most important fact that we should, we should focus on is education part and giving people not just the education of the university you know many people focus on I'm just gonna graduate and that's all no we're talking about a technical education education you know how to do something how to uh, be an entrepreneur how can you come up with an idea let's give an example of Facebook when it started back then in the university it's not an idea but now it's become one of the most dominant social platform in the world so we can still have that in Africa of course because we have people with the idea but the, 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 we don't have the knowledge the full knowledge on how to do it the, 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 the more resources of doing it so providing those kind of capacity building the training the education and the know-how it will help Africa to be a sustained that at least there will be some you know uh, uh, the independency in terms of uh, 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 um, in terms of wealthy in terms of well-being in terms of a lot of things so I think uh, the most focus now is to how can we use these resources we have uh, I have the resources, how can, rather than bringing those resources out to the country and then you know what, when they took things from Africa and go to other places, we use buy it in a double money. They will get it from our place with the cheaper money, then after taking it outside to other countries, and then we, the owners of the goods, will have to buy it again in a higher and double money. Why? So when I use those technology, why? government can put like a, 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 like a policy that you want the resources of Africa, you have to build it in Africa. You want to do something. You're talking about yeah. the infrastructure. Exactly, yeah. Build it there and then let's share it. You understand? So you don't need to take it, and most of they would take it out and go there and then bring it back in higher, in higher money. For no. manufacturing or any. Exactly. We can give you, there's a lot of BOT contracts that can be done that you have the 25 years of, uh, of, of using the, uh, the, 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 maybe the, 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 the infrastructure you built and then for, for a country it will last a long. We have been seeing a lot of infrastructure did in such kind of way, even not in Africa and Gulf countries, in many countries. So why can't we use that in Africa? And at the end of the day, using that, uh, uh, I mean, implementing that in Africa uh, must be included by Africans as well, young Africans, to be seeing what is going on, to be seeing how they can build this, to be seeing how they can, you know... So including uh, the African capitals. Exactly. So yeah. also there were talks, uh, we know, I'm talking about, <coughs> sorry, the developments of the IT in general. Of course. And of course, uh, the e-commerce and uh, when we talk about the youth, now youth are experts in this. And uh, talking also about women empowerment in Africa, and this has been a very, uh, one of the most important issues actually uh, to be tackled. Yeah, so, sure. how, so how do you see it and where are we now? Um, to be more honest, there have been a lot of progress. You know, uh, we can see uh, e-commerce platforms in Africa are growing. I'm going to give an example. It's took the term uh, that was uh, uh, later on uh, acquired by Amazon is a success in Egypt, as an example. Uh, in Nigeria, uh, we can talk about Jumia that now is globally known, or at least most of the countries in Africa uh, all known of Jumia. And I think there are still a lot of e-commerce companies that are trying to uh, put up the line in, in a global level. Uh, so there's been a lot of progress, but the problem is that no matter how the progress we have, we still need more achievement to do, we still need more support to do, we still need a lot of things so that we can, rather than having one uh, uh, e-commerce unicorn, we can have 10, rather than having 10, we can have 20. So, uh, and talking about the woman part, which is so important, we have seen women are playing a role in Africa. Many countries, they have been leading in some industries, which is very important. So I think uh, uh, what we need, the, the unity first, and we can see how to emphasize the intra-African trade, how to emphasize intra-African export as well. What I'm saying is that, as an Nigerian, I always say I've seen a lot of experience in Egypt. It's, Egypt is one of the leading countries in Africa in terms of expertise, in terms of uh, industrial, 
uh, uh, sectors. And but I'm still looking forward, and we are trying in our center and many things that how can we merge those experiences together in African countries? How can we use the expertise? We can see things made in Egypt. When the FIFA World Cup, the, the ball was made in Egypt, which is something wow, this is a proud to Africans. So, what we're looking for now, how to, to start using the, the leadership of Egypt in Africa to get into the African countries so that we can have start doing the similar, or at least on the road, we can have uh, uh, the sector there in industrial, we can have rather than importing stuff. Like give an example, some countries in Africa exports more than 90% uh, uh, of things are imported to the country. So why are the other countries, why can we provide what we need without importing outside? So once things are started growing, the collaboration has started growing, I think we we'll come out to a solution that we will have our own resources and we have our way to manage our resources and we have our way on to go. Right. And especially when it comes to, uh, we have seen uh, different uh, means of cooperation between Egypt and the African sure. countries, uh, mutual cooperation. We're talking about different uh, fields, actually, just as you were talking, talking about education, uh, medical uh, cooperation, uh, a lot of things, right? And uh, definitely this is going to be very, very important for the future as well. Sure, sure, sure. We are talking about the Africa agenda and one of the most important is the unity. Not just in, uh, you know, uh, one of the good things I love about football is that you see how Africans are united in football, you see? When Maghreb is playing, we all, we all are Africans. It is a soft power. You yeah. All people <laughs> yeah. Of there. yeah, exactly. We need the same power and the same unity in everything. In trade, in education, in experience exchange. So if you have that, so meaning naturally you have that feeling that I'm African. I mean... Uh, let's say um, uh, Maghrib, there are Arab and Africans, but they still have the feeling of the Africans. And we support them rather than other countries. Even when they play with Portugal, I love Cristiano Ronaldo, but I said it's Africa. It's an Arab country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I have to support Maghrib. So I have to support Morocco, I mean. So that natural support is there. So how can we, you know, uh, 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 put more effort on that? So we have to make it more widely rather than in football to have it same in commerce to have it in trade in education in expertise there's types of many of expertise even they're talking about the technician one you know uh, i can be like an Nigerian. i maybe i can think of doing something that i can do by my own hands uh, you know so how can we share that in a continental way so that everyone will gain and then the more we gain the more we'll be growing up you know, the more that you bring yours, I bring mine. So we are gathering the expertise together. So it's making us more bigger to even compete later on in the global world. Right. Uh, so on the conclusion, if I asked you about um, how do you see now we are talking about uh, our uh, vision and uh, how we want uh, where everyone is actually moving uh, parallel uh, to each other and trying to achieve uh, the vision, whether we're talking about 2030 or 2060. And uh, of course, um, this is something of great importance because it can tell that we are on the right track. Yeah, I can say that we are on the right track, sure. Uh, things have been, a lot of efforts have been put, uh, and then uh, we are hoping that th those efforts will lead to the sustainable development because the most important thing that we need something that will sustain, uh, something that will take a long time to be available for even the generations to come so that they will see that, yeah, the African Union that has been established has an impact to the continent and as i heard even the president uh, of egypt Abdel Fattah Sisi, was uh, uh, making more important on how african union uh, should, should should put more effort in this continental uh, uh, achievement in this continental progress because once there is uh, like the, what they call it the, the supreme uh, 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 leaders with the with the ha that's why we have african union so that we can have an agenda unity agenda that we can work on together so it will help a lot uh, we can look for, let's say, this country needs some kind of advancement in terms of uh, tools, in terms of instruments, in terms of anything. And the other country has that equipment and instrument. How can we exchange those kind of things together? How can we work as a country, not as a continent, work in the same way? Let's just assume Nigeria is just another state in Egypt. Let's assume uh, Morocco is another state in, uh, let's say, in Cote d'Ivoire. You understand what I'm saying? With that kind of thinking and mindset, I think we will come to the unity because the unity is the most important thing. The unity yeah. of the African uh, countries or the African continent acting as one man, as definitely this will exactly. create a major superpower 
for the whole world. Sure, sure, sure. I really see that. Even now I'm trying to work on the, the promotion between Egypt and Nigeria in terms of investment and trade. And I've been seeing a lot of opportunities, really. A lot of people are interested, a lot of uh, things that we can come by together to, to, to make things. So uh, just two countries, so talk about the whole countries, which is 55 countries. And I think we have the, what, what it takes. And uh, now uh, we are on the way already and we hope we will gather more to put more effort to reach the level. People may be thinking that we can achieve it, but I'm sure that we can achieve it because uh, looking at bad days, 20 days before, 20 years before, there are a lot of things that are not even where, you know, many countries are still sleeping, many countries are not, yeah, there's been a lot of crises and, you know, but now things are getting advanced. The countries are growing, there have been a lot of people and to be more uh, sure, even the participation of youth is getting more bigger in some countries in Africa. I can have some uh, friends that I've, I've been now heading some uh, uh, ministries, and which is very important, which is very good. And then, which that's all we wanted, but we just hope for it to long, uh, to last long, uh, uh, to last longer, to you know, to the uh, uh, for the next generation to come, so that at least if we didn't have, we didn't see the Africa we want, at least the next generation we will see the Africa that we have dreamed of that has been achieved in Africa. So we really hope that, really. Right, uh, Mr. Abdullah Far uh, Ahmed, uh, Executive Director at African Center for Investment and Trade Exchange. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. You're much welcome. Thank you so much for hosting me. Thank you. Right, uh, moving on to a quick break, then we'll be back. <laughs>